Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 75 through 77 of Ree's Royal Love. After the mess with a would-be assassin, the Emperor and the Fifth Prince put together use hand and things. The Emperor decides to send her back to be punished, but does still need to keep her alive to keep up relations with the Korchin tribe. Yen Wan meets with Yuncha in private. I know he can't really say no, but after the attempted rape last time, I would not be alone with her for anything. She tries to tell him to avoid being so close to Ruyi, saying she's on her way out and will drag him down with her. Yuncha is having none of that. She finally sees that he really is over her and seemingly in love with Ruyi. So after years of keeping her creepy eunuch from hurting Yuncha, she lets him loose. Rumors start to crop up about an affair between Ri and Yuncha. No points for guessing where they came from. Highland has given both Yuncha and Ri so many reminders about keeping their distance, and Yuncha has been making an effort to avoid both Ri and the 12th Prince, but it just wasn't enough. Highland tells Ri they can get rid of the rumors by revealing the relationship between Yuncha and Yenwan, effectively throwing Yuncha under the bus to protect her reputation. Highland hasn't wavered in her dedication to Ri, but over the years she has become much colder and more calculating. I thought, especially since Yuncha has been so loyal to Ri for so many years, that Highland would spare a thought for him. But no, her only thought is for Ri's safety. So even though Ri expressly forbids it, Highland secretly gets her maids to start spreading the gossip that Yen Wan and Yuncha knew each other before she became a consort. Similar to what happened with the first prince, if Highland thinks disobeying Ri is what's in her best interest, that's what she'll do. The rumors about Yuncha and Yen Wan end up being much more popular as Yen Wan is closer in age to Yuncha and they are actually from the same village. Exactly as Highland predicted, it takes all of the heat away from Ri. Ri confronts Highland about spreading the rumors, but Highland is resolute. She has no qualms about throwing Yuncha into the fire if it saves Ri, especially as this move gets rid of Yen Wan as well. The rift between the Emperor and Ruyi has become a canyon at this point, and Hylan worries that all it will take is one more blow and Ruyi will never recover. In some of the most frustrating scenes in this drama, the Empress Dowager tries to put a band-aid on this gaping wound of a relationship and I just, you caused this! You forced Ruyi into this position, knowing damn well what the result would be, and now you're lecturing them to get along like you're not a major part of the problem. Anyway. Her thinly disguised metaphors wrapped up in the play, surprise, surprise, don't fix a damn thing. Thanks for nothing. The Emperor calls Yen Wan in to talk about the rumors. Her creepy eunuch prepped her for this though, and she knows just what to do. She says they were close before because they came from the same village, but they were never in a relationship. And honestly, she's good. Calm, serious, but not overly eager. The Emperor seems to believe her and wants to leave it at that. Then, Consort Yu shows up. Did you think we were done with her? I know I did. With her is Yun Cha's wife, Mao Qian. She reports to the Emperor that she has proof that Yuncha and the Empress are having an affair. The Emperor calls in Yuncha and Ri. Li Yu comes rushing into Ri's palace and can I just say, it feels like Ri's heart is so cold and dead now and it hurts to see, but yeah, I totally get it. Yuncha as well, I mean he's freaking out a little bit, but he's clearly just so tired of this. Yo, Ling Mao Qian is completely unrepentant. Yuncha tries to get her to go back, but she says she has done nothing wrong and will put everything out in the open today. Ri arrives in time to hear Mao Qian talking about how Yuncha calls for Ri in his sleep, and it seems like a good time to step in. That sigh, though, I felt that. Getting to work, Ri says Mao Qian must be mistaken. Yun Cha was probably saying Ri as in Sui Xin Ri, wishing everything goes well. After all, Mao Qian said she heard Yun Cha saying her name on days when there were big calamities in the palace. Ri has a lot of meanings like things going smoothly, getting what you want, being happy and well. Yun Cha must have just been worried about the royal family and the emperor's burdens. You could not get away with this in English. Yeah, he was saying Sarah in his sleep, but he meant serotonin, as in he hopes your serotonin levels aren't too low. Mao Qian has more though, a pair of shoes. In episode 27, when Ri was released from the cold palace, she gave Yuncha a pair of boots with a cloud embroidery on the inside as thanks for helping her through the ordeal. There's another kind of play on words here since this is a Ri cloud, an embroidery pattern you've probably seen before. 
So Rui again here is like happy, well, but also sounds like Rui's name. And then with it being a cloud, that could be a reference to Yun Che's name since Yun means cloud in Chinese. Rui says she did give them to him as a gift of thanks for saving her life, but she says Suo Xin made them, not her, which is a lot less inappropriate. They compare the embroidery Rui has made for the emperor in the past, and Yu Hu and I are on the same page. Thank God it's not a match. With that, the baddies have no more evidence and the emperor sentences you to death. He then grants Yuncha a divorce from Mao Qian, and she is to be imprisoned for life. To come up into the palace uninvited and disrespect the empress of the country like this without even making 100% sure you're right? Yeah, you deserve this. And I'm so happy for Yuncha that he finally gets out of this marriage. It seems they didn't go this far in the drama, but in the novel she was even abusing him, hitting him and scratching him when he didn't do what she said, leaving him having to cover up at work so people wouldn't see the damage. Yinwan doesn't get in trouble because she was smart enough to keep her mouth shut for the most part while the proceedings were happening. She was, as always, involved though. Earlier we saw her and Creepy Eunuch talking about meeting Yu and encouraging her to join forces with Mao Qian, but she gets away with it again. When Rui tries to leave, the emperor warns her that where there's smoke, there's fire. She needs to be more careful around Yun Cha. He doesn't accuse her of having an affair, but he says he suspects that Yun Cha is in love with her. The emperor wonders if this is what has kept her so distant from him lately, and how do you even talk to this buffoon? Did you forget when you turned the whole palace upside down because you were so horny for some random girl? And when you slapped her? Not to mention all of that astrology nonsense? Rui has enough and leaves. Rui. This is so depressing. What else can she possibly say to him? What else can she possibly do? The emperor tried to pretend that lightheartedness during that little trial, but there's no denying that he really did suspect her. All it would have taken is one little slip up and he would have believed that she could be unfaithful to him. Rui handled this really well, but it was a dangerous situation. Which is why Hailan is so pissed at her son. A servant tried to get a message to Hailan to let her know that Rui was in trouble, but Fifth Prince intervened and kept it from her, wanting to protect her as he worried that her going over would only make things worse. <laughs> She calls him cold and disloyal and ah, I get it Hailan, but do you not see how you're being this uncompromising is why he felt he had to hide this from you in the first place? Eventually he manages to get her to see reason and understand that her being there really would not have helped. And yeah, I agree, the emperor has completely lost it. That evening he's in his study replaying every incident between Yun Cha and Rui again and again in his head. He clearly isn't going to let this go. He calls the creepy eunuch in and tells him to arrest Yun Cha. Okay, I can't lie, as much as I hate this part, I also enjoy it a lot. It's just so well done. At times I have to pause and remind myself that this does not affect my life at all because it's making me so frustrated and angry. And I think that's what this drama does best. It makes you really feel the emotions of the character. I feel like I totally understand every bad decision that every character makes, even while I'm screaming at them to stop. Like this interesting development happening with Yan Wan's servants. Her main crew is Lan Cui, Chun Chan, and Wang Chan. Lan Cui and Chun Chan, she's known since they were all servants together, and she brought them in when she joined the harem. So Yen Wan had Lan Cui communicating with Yu to plan this whole affair accusation. When it fell through, the plan was to send Lan Cui back to her hometown so she wouldn't be tempted to blab. But then later, Chun Chan and Wang Chan find out what really happened. And they know Yen Wan did it. I just love to see background characters that also have full lives and struggles. As for the novel, there are actually so many changes to this part that it would have made the video way too long, but not to worry, I will cover them next time in a separate video. Till next time, thanks for watching.